good, uh, I think a good transition back to the trucking space. So, so it's, I mean, you're talking about, I don't know, this intuition that's built up over time and oh, through experience. And, and so I'd now be interested to get your thoughts. So automated trucking, and we're talking ADS systems, full, fully automated driver for systems, whether it's in a convoy platooning setting or whether it's a middle mile, or whether it's long haul or, I don't know, short haul, middle mile, last mile, like these are all being approached from from different areas, but I think there's similarity in trying to pr perform these miles with, without needing a driver. And as you mentioned, significant total cost of ownership, potential benefit. And there have been many, I don't know about many, several companies who have had successful pilots on the road, right? And so, some are still driving. Some have had some success. Hey, we've driven from A to B. We've shown, great, our, our product works. This proof of concept works. Now, the next question is how, how do we fully validate and transition from being with what I consider an R&D organization, right? So some, something that's been able to put, put a product on the road to now becoming a production. And this, this includes right, things like cybersecurity and full functional safety it includes validating and building up this type of intuition, where, whereas now you don't have a driver, but the system needs to be able to make these types of decisions in, in real time. And so how, how, and how do you think about what this transition looks like, how, how challenging this is, or how quickly this is going to happen for some of these companies. Wow. That, that's more than $6 million question. I think what we're finding with a number of companies that uh, you look at the teams that they have uh, developed and, and brought on, you've got a lot of experienced players now. <clears throat> Prior to that, it was just very, very smart techno people developing an, a an ADS stack, um, doing some initial prototype work, a lot of simulation work, maybe some test track work, and they got to a particular level. So if you look at technology and readiness levels, um, I've got to think about these as well, because when people start talking about um, where we are in sort of technology maturity, it never really comes out. When people are talking, say, deployment on the road, they don't really relate that to TRL, they just, Give you some insurance stipulations and have a safety plan and several other things but they really need to inquire about what's the technical maturity or technology maturity so when you look at certain things at the moment here nine is good to go fully validated in production then you go back eight seven six and in some cases we're still at a six six very much in a seven so you're doing testing you've done the simulation um, you're maybe not in the, the environment yet because the environment is changing. And this is where you have a number of the, the trucking companies, not all of them, tends to be doing a lot of the testing in the Southwest. Why? It's, it's quite pleasant weather. Um, you don't have such a variation. You have many variations, but it's I'm not even going to say predictable because what is predictable when you have other drivers involved, you never know what's going to happen. But you're trying to reduce the variability somewhat. So you stick to a particular um, interstate route, you know you're going between junctions, uh, you know what's happening between there, you've mapped it out, you've taken the precautions. Again, you, you've gone through the risk assessments of it all. And I, I think from my own point of view, you look at the organizations and well, I look at two things, one, the technology maturity, but also the organizational maturity. Um, what I mean by that is, um, especially from a safety point of view, when you, you're not talking about a, a four-ton vehicle uh, out on the road now, you're talking 80,000 pounds. And, and what normally happens is it's other people that get heavily involved because it can in, you know, impact a lot of people. But what I think is now changing is it's not just, uh, say, not just, and NHTSA asks for people to put together the voluntary, uh, the VSSAs, and a number of companies have done that. And you read through it and some people say, oh, it's just propaganda, it's just this, but they, they actually forget that that was for the public to get them feeling a little more confident in terms of what's happening with automation systems in these companies. So it's so not bad mouth it from a techno perspective. It wasn't meant for the techno audience. So you've got to, again, context. Um, but then when you look at other organizations, it's not just about the technology. Uh, functional safety, ISO 26262, extremely important. 
organizational safety, operational safety, vitally important. If you have a company that is developing automation systems, you should have a safety management system in place, similar to what the FAA uh, mandates, requires, similar to what the Federal Transit and FTA uh, have put in place as well. Because that means it's organization-wide. Safety is inbuilt to the organization. It's not just inbuilt to the stack, the vehicle that's going out on the road. And to me, that's the difference between the men and the boys in this way forward. And that is when, if an organization is then with a full um, management system behind them and with the technology that's proven that's gone through all the steps, um, so you have your safety management policy, you have gone through overall risk management, but then safety assurance. And that's the next step. So you can assure that your vehicle will be safe out on the road. And when people say, well, it's all about metrics, and you go, what metrics do we have? 40,000 fatalities a year, 1.1, 1.2 fatalities per 100 million miles driven. Yeah, but that was last year. That was last quarter. And so there's a lot of work going on at the moment relating to metrics and safety performance indices, SPIs. Um, you're gonna, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. You know, that's the old saying. Still true. Um, because if I can't measure it, I don't know. If I don't know if it's getting better or getting worse, I don't know how to, you know, how do I know when things are getting better? So a lot of this becomes into safety assurance, which a lot of companies really need to focus upon. Again, it's the maturity level of the company, where you are TRL level, where you are relative to production, and therefore you are having to get to the safety assurance. And if we're looking at trucking, which they've gone through pilots, in the next one, two, three years, it's going to get very serious in terms of the number of trucks that are going to be out on the roads. Safety assurance is absolutely vital.